nanocobalamin is high, but I thought our body flushes out the B vitamins. What do I do or how does that happen? Okay, so first of all, you used a, a medical term here, cyanocobalamin. Okay, there are different types of B12, cyanocobalamin, adenocobalamin, methylcobalamin, there's hydroxycobalamin. So when we intake B12, it has to be converted in our body in multiple ways, okay? So when you're doing a blood test, now I can only assume that you're checking the blood levels of cyanocobalamin or of the cobalamins in your blood and they're coming back high and you're wondering if you're toxic, right? Uh, blood measurement of B12 is not fantastic. It is great for finding deficiency, but it is not great for finding optimal levels because if you're taking it, of course, it's going to be floating around in the blood until it's removed. I would argue that perhaps you had been taking it regularly. If you're taking it regularly, of course, it's going to be high in the blood. Are you toxic? Not necessarily. Another thing to consider um, I have, and by the way, but I have seen toxicity of cobalamins and this mostly comes from injectable. I see people taking high doses of injectable too often. So I've seen it both ways. Um, most of the time when I see that it's because the person has an MTHFR deficiency, um, which is a genetic deficiency, MTHFR sounds a lot like a swear word. That's how I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do have information. I have an article on that on my website, MTHFR. And in that case is you have to make sure, and this goes for everyone, guys, B12 doesn't work alone. It works with B6 and methylated folate. And the type that you take needs to be methylated. So if you're taking cyanocobalamin, odds are you're probably not absorbing it well, which is why it's so high in the blood. When you're taking um, a absorbable form and your body is using it well, your levels may come back on the high end, um, but they're not going to be deficient, right? So it, blood work is not always as accurate when it comes to vitamins because all it can do is look at what's floating around right then in the peripheral blood. It's not telling me what's in the cell. Does that make sense? We're not going inside the cell to pull out the level of B12, which is where it's utilized. We're going into the blood. So yes, some doctors would say, well, if it's in the blood, that means the cell is full. Nah, I don't know. Because if you don't have proper pathways for that and your body can't transport the B12 into the cell because it doesn't have the methylation capacity, you're going to have high levels in the blood, low levels in the cell, and symptoms of B vitamin deficiency. So there's a lot more to it than just that. So my advice would be, I think everyone, honestly, if you're under stress, if you live a life in this world, you're under stress in some way. B vitamins get burned through. It's really important to be taking a methylated B vitamin. I prefer all of them. Um, I use my total B complex every single day. If you have the MTHFR, you may have to go higher in the B6 component and the methylfolate component. I very rarely find that you have to go higher in the B12 component. And this is converse to what most people say, right? They pump you full of B12. So there's a very important relationship there to pay attention to. I do have an article on this, MTHFR.